All right. Let's go ahead and call this meeting to order. Everybody, please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if everyone will please remain standing, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So I'd like everybody to keep in mind all of the breast cancer patients, survivors, their families, and all those affected by this disease, as well as our first responders. Thank you very much. Please have a seat. And we are live. And um, this is a hybrid meeting. We're being recorded via Zoom and the recording will be uploaded later to the township's YouTube channel for viewing. Under the chairman's report, the board met in executive session prior to tonight's meeting to discuss legal and personnel matters. The pipeline task force, conservancy and futures committees are all looking for new members. Please fill out the ABC volunteer form on the website that is located on the forms and applications page. Township offices will be closed on Friday, November 11th in recognition of Veterans Day. Thank you, veteran. There are no public hearings this evening and under emergency reports, we have Chief Brenda Perdon. Hello, hello, how are you tonight? Great, it's definitely fall. The air is crisp. Thanks for coming tonight. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to start with the statistical report first. In the month of September, the police department responded to 1,689 calls for service. Year to date for all three townships, we have responded to 10,387 calls for service. In doing the analysis, um, there was an 82.4% increase in calls for service when comparing September 2022 to the pre-pandemic year of September 2019. There is a 14% increase in calls for service when comparing the date data from 2002, 2022 to 2019. Specific to East Goshen, the township's calls for service in 2022 are almost 15% higher than the calls for service in the pre-pandemic year of 2019. It's safe to say that overall, the department's calls for service are higher than they were for, before the pandemic. With regard to community engagement, there are several things I'd like to bring to everyone's attention. We will be participating again this year in Blue Beards for Charity, which means our officers will be growing beards in October, November, December. And by doing so, they're raising funds to contribute to charities. We encourage our residents to participate in this charity drive by purchasing a sign. We support Blue Beards for Charity and putting it in their yard. $20 per sign, all profit goes to the charities. This year's charities are Unite for Her, which is a breast cancer uh, support charity, the Sambuco Children's Education Fund, supporting four children of an officer in Chester County who died very suddenly, A Child's Light, which provides counseling for children who are the victim of sexual and domestic violence abuse, and also uh, the Chester County Crime Victim Center, and this year we will be supporting uh, the family of Officer Josh Mikan from our own department who died from COVID in 2021. We are also supporting Toys for Tots this year. And if you want to, we have our, our box in our lobby and we will also be reaching out to other agencies like East Goshen who want to have a box. We also supported Emergency Nurses Week by donating to the effort and also Domestic Violence Awareness Month. The biggest emerging trends in East Goshen were the fact that once again, we had washed checks where somebody writes a check, thinks they're mailing it, somebody gets the check before it reaches at the end party, wash it, they put a new payee on it and a much higher amount on it. And then you find out when your bank account bounces. The second organized crime, retail thefts. In, East Goshen, we very rarely get a lot of retail thefts, but we find that these individuals are coming out from other areas and committing large retail thefts where they sometimes steal up to $3,000 at a single shot. Um, in the month of September, we had four retail thefts in East Goshen and three arrests. 
So we are we are diligently tracking down these individuals. A summary of the police blotter material for East Goshen for the month of September. Uh, theft was the most prevalent crime. Uh, we had two routine thefts, if you want to call them. Eight check washing thefts, four stolen vehicles, 13 thefts from vehicles, a theft of a, a vehicle from a dealership, and the four retail thefts that I already mentioned. As far as the theft of vehicles and theft from vehicles, as I reported last month, those all occurred in a single crime spree within a 24-hour period. But we are doing a lot of additional patrol checks in the neighborhoods to see if we can deter that. There were also 21 disturbances, three simple assaults with two arrests, two sex offense investigations, a child abuse investigation, one drug-related and one alcohol-related investigation, both with arrests made, 12 fraud investigations, four missing juveniles, four missing adult investigations, all subjects were located, and one witness intimidation investigation, which also resulted in an arrest. So it was a busy month in East Goshen. Uh, are there any questions from the board? Chief, I have a question. Um, I've seen a lot about the 988 um, suicide and mental health mm -hmm. line. Can you talk to us a little bit about how that interfaces with our county or, and, and the police department um, as far as a call into 988? Well, almost every police department has it on their crime watch or their website and also on their social media. Um, and what that does is it puts you directly in touch with the mental health resources in Chester County. If for any reason they believe that there's an imminent threat, they will call the police department. We will go out and try to make contact with them. Um, in the meantime, a lot of times while we're out there trying to make sure they don't commit suicide, they're in the process of getting an involuntary commitment. And then we help them serve that so that they're taken directly for treatment. An imminent threat, would that mean that at any uh, person calling in saying, I'm thinking of uh, harming myself, would a police officer be dispatched that automatically? Is that a- There's a potential for that, yes. Usually they try to dig a little bit deeper. They wanna make sure that they also have the method to do it. Like they'll kind of ask questions about how they plan on doing it. Um, but I believe that most of those calls end up being held and handled almost exclusively within the mental health resources. Because unless you can show that you are a, a clear and present danger to your health and safety or somebody else's, and there's very strict guidelines for that, um, there's nothing that the police can do. A lot of times we will go to the residences and we'll talk to the people and we'll offer them resources, but we don't force them to do anything because legally we cannot. It's a great resource, and I'm very happy that Chester County has adopted it. Thank you, Chief, for coming. Could do you mind going back? I didn't have a chance to write it down. The number at the beginning of calls for service versus pre-pandemic and now, and then I think there's another statistic that I missed. Do you mind rereading that if possible? Okay. September 2022, just for the month of September, there were 1,000 689. Yep, got that one. If you look at September of 2019, it's 926. So it's basically doubled. Yeah. And with regard year to date from January 1st to the end of September for all three townships, it's 10,387. And for 2019, it was 9,101. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Chief, would you be kind enough to make sure we get a, a box for the Toys for Tots? I'd be happy to. Thank you for and supporting it. Yeah, no problem. Our, our residents are always very supportive of that program. Um, and the other thing is the um, Bluebeard's, uh, Bluebeard's uh, charity. Right. How would people go about um, getting the sign or donating? donating. All you have to do is um, earmark your funds, Bluebeard's for charity, if you want to do it by mail. Or you can just stop in the police department. Okay, great. And, you know, we're, we're actually getting a couple of people who have called and asked, like, hey, when you're in the area, would you mind stopping by? I'd like to hand you a check for the charity. So we've done that, too. Okay, thank you. So I, I wanted to know how to do that. So you have plenty of signs then? Oh, yeah. Okay. And this is something that we're doing um, with all the police departments in Chester County. There's also another thing that if you're a coffee drinker, there is a company that produces uh, 
a brand of coffee locally that they're creating a special one just for this charity. Mm -hmm. And um, we're working on getting some of that if anybody's interested in it. Nice. And um, so the men are growing beards. Mm -hmm. So are the women participating? <laughs> Actually, when well, I put that out, I, I asked them. A them sexist why. would say. It's yeah, yeah, it's it's hard. <laughs> but we asked them what they wanted to do. Some police departments, they allow, like our police department does not allow you to wear brightly colored fingernail polish uh, in uniform. And I said, anybody interested? And they're like, yeah, not really. Some people, like I said, what about a pink badge? Some entire police departments issue pink badges. And there wasn't much interest in that. But I mean, most of the women in the department just write the check. It's, it's, it's oh, for a charity. So hopefully <laughs> none of the beard guys wanted the, uh, the, the, pink, the pink badges. Nail polish. <laughs> I'd be willing to go for that. There you I go. Mean, if, if that's what makes you feel Equality. good Equality. about supporting a charity. Well, um, that's what you should do. I'm willing to support that. All right. Well, great. We really we haven't asked for pink patrol cars yet, though. Okay. Well, Some please, police departments have done that. Please don't. <laughs> um, I don't think I have any other questions. Mike, did you have anything for the chief? And um, I guess thank you very much for coming out. Thank tonight. you, chief. Thank, thank you. you. See you soon. We will see you soon. Like tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. Same time. Oh, no. Some Same place earlier time. And uh, we'll move on to Goshen, Goshen Fire Department. So Grant, do you have a report for us tonight? Thank you. Okay, so for the month of September, uh, we had a total of 479 responses. Uh, we had 17 fire calls in East Goshen, uh, 10 fire police responses in East Goshen and 173 EMS responses in East Goshen. Uh, the big focus for the month for us, uh, Last week was Fire Prevention Week, mm -hmm. so we spent most of September prepping for that. Um, we held our Fire Prevention Open House last Friday night. Um, we had great weather. We had a fairly decent turnout considering the Phillies were playing. Um, it's hard to compete with uh, a winning team. Um, but also- Yes, our... I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. not much of a crowd today. Move it along. Um, and our uh, staff during the daytime have attended or, or are scheduled to attend 16 school events um, teaching fire prevention to uh, the younger the younger grades. Um, aside from that, um, our 15 week club raffle is doing very well underway. Um, I think uh, 150 bucks. Somebody, we have a winner nice. here. Nice. I think West Ocean supervisor won as well. So you know we're doing our doing our thing. Uh, <laughs> if it was, I would have gone for the 500, not the 50. And our uh, buffet breakfast, which reopened in September, was uh, well attended, and we have another one coming up this Sunday. Good. Great. That's all I have. Any questions? All right, great. I do not have any questions. Anybody have I'm any good. questions for Grant? Thank you, Grant. Thanks for coming out tonight. We appreciate it. Derek, are you going to? Yes, Carmen cannot attend tonight, so I will take care of the rest, Madam Chair. For so Malvern Fire Company, East Goshen had. 30 calls for the month of September. Year-to-date responses was 290 calls, and that is accounts for 18.7% of the total department calls. Good fellowship. Good fellowship. East Goshen had a total of 39 calls for the month of September. Year-to-date, that is 462 calls, and that is a year-to-date variance of or to me, year to day variance of negative uh, 26% down from uh, last year, this time last year. So that was good fellowship, and that is all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, who is our, our uh, fire marshal now that Carmen's out on medical? Dwayne? <laughs> no, not me. I have no expertise in that. Uh, Dwayne, uh, our zoning officer, who also is a chief at Pottstown. Um, so he's familiar with all the duties. Oh, okay. uh, so he is stepping Good. in right now. Thank you. All right, Dave, you have a financial report for us. Uh, September 2022 financial report. As of September 30th, net of pass throughs, the general fund had a year to date revenues of 9 million. $131,783 and expenses of $7,936,249 for 
for a surplus year to date of $1,195,534. As of September 30th, the general fund balance was $7,162,758. Actual revenue year to date is 3% higher than budget, 1% uh, higher than prior year. Uh, building permits, PR programs, continued strong EIT revenue, and our increased interest earnings is driving our increase versus the budget. Um, as you can see, we're pretty flat from last year. Uh, year to date expenses are 3% over budget, 5% higher than last year. Uh, stormwater costs, park programs, class expenses, EIT commissions is driving the year to date expenses versus budget. Uh, net result from actual operations year to date is $63 higher than budget. $63,095 uh, higher than budget um, and $272,000 behind prior years uh, year to date. In conclusion, through nine months of 2022, East Coast still remains on pace to meet our 2022 general fund budget expectations, and we will continue to monitor expenses and revenues versus budget. Uh, we did just recently get another, we got a $75,000 um, unanticipated renewal payment from Liberty Towers, the wireless tower. That's a 10-year renewal. So our monthly revenue goes up slightly from 4,000 and change to 5,000, and we get the, the $75,000 every 10 years. Okay. Any questions on the year-to-date revenues or expenses? No, thank you. All right, we are moving along to the minutes, approval of minutes and treasurer's report. The minutes are dated September 6th, 13th, and September 20th. Madam Chair, I'd like to make the motion to approve the minutes of the September 6th, September 13th, and September 20th meeting minutes. Second. Okay. Okay. Did anybody see any corrections? I, I went through them. I didn't see any need for correction. Sorry. You are spot on, ma'am. You are spot on, ma'am. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All I right. have the September 27th meeting minutes next. Okay. And are there any questions regarding the minutes here in the room or on Zoom? And seeing none, I'm going to call the question. Those in favor of passing the minutes through as part of the record? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? None. Uh, Treasurer's report, Dave. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, uh, last two weeks, general fund, well, it's actually the 15th through the October 13th, so almost, uh, almost four weeks. Um, general fund revenue of this period was driven by our third quarter uh, recharges. That's sewer municipal authority and uh, refuse, Goshen fire reimbursement, state pension aid received, state volunteer fire relief association payments mm -hmm. received, uh, earned income tax and real estate transfer tax receipts, the vertical bridge 10 year renewal payment, which I just mentioned, and Friends of East Goshen contribution for Community Day. Uh, experience for this period included WeGo's October contribution, Goshen and Malvern Firefighters Relief Distributions, and paving materials, equipment rental, tree removal, and ongoing operating expenses. Uh, our capital expenses included the final payment to Edmonds for our new financial software and a deposit for a new jump truck. I have a, a question, um, and Mark is in the room. I noticed that tree removal was just shy of $33,000 for this period. Uh, is that typical? Are we gonna see that going forward? Is that a lot higher than previous years? Yeah, all approved by the Astro. And so that's, that's gonna be a recurring increased expense because of the trees that need to come down. Okay. Who, who are we paying that to? Knights uh, Tree Service has our bid, and he's behind, so we you know, hired another kid to do it on uh, Home Miles Drive, so I'm flying him out. Who, who is that? The owner, Travis Corner. Oh, right, right. I live down the street from him, yeah. Okay, so my nice two kids. He's going to get a shot at and he's going to play on the next year. So we got a slam for him. Mm hmm. Yeah, in 2019, it was about $73,000, and 2022 projections, $144,000. Oh, We've geez. got $150,000. They're, they're coming down pretty quick. I mean, you get and this is time. not including the stuff that our guys take down, um, yeah. which falls under general maintenance. I so. just asked the question to highlight the trend and what we're going to see going forward from a budget perspective. I just want everyone to be aware I, of that. So, that, that was well. a good question. Um, 
do we have an idea, Mark, how how busy it's going to get? The the how many trees are going to come down next year or the year after or whatever? Um, I'm going to reach a fly saving fire range in two fires. July of next year. So it's wow. Around. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. 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 Right, jeez. All right, so July, it, it may be. Yeah. Madam Chair, I move that we accept the receipts and approve the expenditures as presented in the expenditure registered and as summarized in the treasurer's report. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions about the bills? No questions. Do you have questions, yeah. Cody? Yep. Are there any questions regarding the bills here in the room or in our Zoom room? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. Those in favor of paying the bills. Aye. Aye. Thank you. And as is my prerogative, I'm going to change the order up a little bit. Um, we're going to move old business down. Uh, we're going to consider the new business so we can get through all of that um, quickly if possible. So um, why don't we bring up the, uh, consider the recycling toter grant program. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I will let uh, Dave Ware, and then I think Jason's on the line, um, who have been handling this mostly, but this is exactly what we discussed last year. Uh, the board at the time did not want to do it um, and said if it was budgeted, um, we'll circle back and, and possibly look at it again in September, October next year. So again, this was a year, a year ago, it was the 902 grant program, which pays 90% of eligible costs for a variety of municipal recycling initiatives. Uh, this specifically would be the uh, toter, uh, recycling toters, uh, the, the large, I guess, uh, 60 gallon ones that have the wheels on it that not every, 65 gallons, I apologize, that not everybody has in the township. So this was sort of standardize that and, uh, you know, we would distribute it in some way, shape or form uh, throughout the township. But again, this was brought to the board last year. I know Cody was not on, so that's the first time he's seeing it. Um, but again, we're just bringing it to the board again based on us discussion last year. I'd like to make a comment. Um, yeah, we considered it last year, and, and I think for a bunch of reasons, we decided not to do it. But I, I want to say a couple things. One is that um, that cost is included in the 2023 budget. And the expense that we're talking about is really the assembly and distribution expense is $18,940. Um, and we have a refuse fund balance of $568,805 uh, that we can use to uh, spend that um, to, to uh, accomplish this uh, total program. So uh, I think it's a pr prudent use of the refund, the uh, refuse fund balance. I agree, David. I, I would like to know though, um... Where does the who's going to assemble it and dis, distribute these? That it's seventeen thousand nine hundred and forty dollars. That's the quote from Otto, who is the manufacturer. Oh, they put them together. Is they that... will if we wanted to. Now, whether we had to do it internally or not, we needed a cost for the grant application. So I, I reached out to I them see. to get all the costs identified. Okay. okay. Do we know what entails assembly? Are there Wheels that have to be put on them and the lids have to be put on Wheels, them. lids. There's also when they manufacture it, they put a little, I um, can't remember, what do they call chip, it? Chip, yeah. GPS chip. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Another quick question. <clears throat> Two parts, we'll make the easy one first. Uh, does distribution mean they're going to come and drop it off at my house? Yes. Beautiful. Second question is, where did Jason get the township could save 20 to 30K a year number? That's from the increased, well, it'll lower our tipping charges by having cleaner stuff um, go into the dump. And also that doesn't even take into account that we could actually increase our performance recycling 901 grant, which would go up because of our additional clean oh, really? recycling. Yeah. All right. I think it's a really important point in that not only can we use the, um, the refuse fund balance to pay for this, but um, it's less expensive 
when stuff goes from landfill trash into recycling, mm -hmm. but we pay a ton for tonnage on recycling is less than, so we can encourage people to use those by using, you know, bigger uh, toters with wheels on them. It'll reduce our our cost uh, for for and might even offset the the total cost of this uh, project. So. Well, it's okay. good. Who got the grant, uh, Jason? Well, we we were applying. We're going to meet with them this week. This this oh, is an okay. authorization okay. to go ahead okay. and do that. So this is an authorization to apply for the grant. And if we don't get the grant, then we don't move forward. Okay. Correct. So I'll um, make a motion to okay. authorize um, staff to apply for a voter grant, and if approved, the expenditure of up to eighteen thousand nine hundred and forty dollars in matching funds. Um, for the grant um, of 168,000. A total of $168,000. Okay. I'll second that. Thank you. Um, are there any questions uh, on the board here regarding this? No. Are there any questions in the room? Please come on up. Hold on, just, just wait till you come on up. You have to have to talk right, into them. It has to be right in the microphone. Um, what is what does the contract with the hauler say as far as speaking to the microphone because the zoom people what can't does the contractor what does the contract say with the hauler as far as the size of the tote that it's within their it's within their specifications that they 64. will accept 65 gallon toters 65 gallon. are acceptable within their and it's in our contract with the hauler because the hauler doesn't have a lift no, but and that 65 gallons is really heavy. But the, the trash code, the last time I got one, different capability. we only had a 32 gallon uh, tote for the code. So you're gonna have to change the code in order to do this. No. I, well, what happened to the last, I mean, 100, 100 residents already got these toters. Well, we, I was gonna say, we talked to AJ about this yeah. last year and they we're were fine with the size of the gallon and toters. There's a hundred toters out there right now. They lift them into the, they manually lift them into the truck. Well, I, I also have seen uh, when they pick up ours, because we use a large toter for our recyclables. Right. One of those, uh, maybe it's more than 65 gallons. And they have something on the back of the truck oh, okay, good. That, that it lifts it up. It's not the one, the side loading one okay. that you see in West Goshen, but it yeah, lifts okay. it in the back of the truck and throws it in. Okay, great. Uh, that's fine, because if it's, if it's not in the contract, you could have a workers' comp problem. Yeah, we we actually did hash that out the year before, before we got the 100 toters that we had gotten for this trial, if you will. So we we did discuss workers' comp as being a problem, okay. and we discussed the fact that these were within their spe specifications. Because that's what happened the last time this came up. Yeah. Well, yeah. They're, they're not our employees either. No. So they're, they're contract it employees. Comes to the, it comes back to the contract. It does. It's yeah. Right. No, Are there any other questions so, in the room? Uh, Michelle, if yeah. I may, I, I pulled up the contract and it does say the township has provided residents with 16 gallon open bins and 65 gallon toters with lids. So it is. Thank you. Already. Thank you, Bill. Hi. Hi. Russ Frank, 451 Gateswood Drive. Uh, David, I had a simple question I wasn't even going to ask until you brought it up. But did you did I understand you correctly that you said that with these totes it'll be cleaner uh, recycling? No, I said well they they will be because they're lidded and and the ones that we use now the small green ones um, uh, in the uh, survey when we talked to residents they said they noticed that that those that are using it see less windblown detritus in the neighborhood so that's it it'll and also. Lidded if it's raining like it was the other day when we everyone put things out when that stuff gets wet the cardboard's um, worthless it, it's yeah. worthless yeah. they won't recycle it so it goes um, to the it goes so that to, goes into yeah. landfill which goes yeah. into our tonnage rate which is a higher rate than yeah. recycle so there's a that's an advantage as well mm -hmm. so there are uh, people still hard. using those green things that I got thirty years ago yeah yeah wow um what do you think the long term projection is going to be with this recycling in the future, because it seems like recycling costs are going more higher and higher than regular trash. Does anybody have an idea on that? It's no. hard to know. Well, actually, this year, we just paid our first bill for recycling. We've gotten credits up to this point, so it hasn't cost us anything yet. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. Yeah. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Russ. Thanks. Uh, are there any questions in the Zoom room regarding this, this program? Mm -hmm. 
or the application for this program. I'd like to thank Jason and Dave for their work on this. Appreciate it. Thanks, sure. Derek. I'm going to call the question. Those in favor of applying for the grant for the toters? Aye. Aye. <laughs> and no opposed. Thank you. All right, moving along to consider the replacement of two pickup trucks. Thank you, Madam Chair. As you can see here, uh, it is a uh, request. There was a request from a resident to take a look at the intersection of Margaret Lane and pickup Ball trucks. But that's okay. We'll do that oh, first. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. You, then it's okay. We'll do. We'll do what you started with. Just stop that's signs right at Baldwin. That. No problem. Uh, so yeah, so uh, I did believe Mark Miller got a call from a resident, um, and he checked out this intersection. Uh, I guess there was some line of sight issues that were identified by Mark. He brought in Sergeant Ted Lewis from uh, WeGo Police Department to get a second uh, pair of eyes on it and, and their expertise. And it was determined that uh, because of the line of sight issues at that intersection, that a three-way stop sign is indeed probably the best way to go. So we are just trying to get a uh, go ahead from the board to uh, install that or, or have that installed by Public Works. There is not a motion on this specific memo, but the mo motion would simply be to allow Public Works to uh, install a three-way stop sign at that intersection. Why would it be a three-way stop and not a four-way stop? It's a three-way three intersection. intersection. Thank you. Madam Chair, I'd like to make the motion to allow Public Works to put in a three-way stop sign at the intersection of Margaret Lane and Baldwin Drive. <clears throat> Second motion. I have a question about the um, um, line of sight is hindered by bushes and trees, not really the road structural part of the road. Is there any way that we can require the bushes and trees to be removed right. and yes. not put the stop sign yes in. if they it's a hand they're, outside, they're right. outside of our right oh of right. Right. i didn't realize so we that. can't require the no even if it's a traffic hazard can we request it okay i mean what we can do is put them in now and then make the inquiry I mean, you can always take them out i guess right is it hard to take a stop sign away no, but I, I will say we need, to, in our code. we need to pass an ordinance Traffic in order to put the stop check. sign there. That is true. Um, yeah. It's not a hard one. It's a couple sentences, yeah. but it does require seven days pre-advertising before you adopt it. Yeah, it's a process of well, public approval. And, and do we have any other in inventory of building. things that are not yet codified that uh, we've made some other traffic uh, control changes in the interim? So we could add that to the ordinance if there's okay. some others outstanding. So we want to hold this then, I guess? I mean, you can put the stop sign up uh, if you if the police cite someone for violating yeah. it and they realize it's not in the ordinance, yeah. they can get off. Now that you're you can talking. still put the stop sign up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, now that you're talking, I remember this whole thing. <laughs> is, is there a chance that perhaps we could um, send a letter to the homeowner and um, potentially request that in, until such time that a stop sign is placed uh, because of their overgrown um, shrubbery and whatnot. Uh, it's not that it's overgrown, it's, it's, it's well maintained yards, it's just neutral tree. I don't think Jones would like to spend $4,000 to take it down. So the question so it's a tree uh, and not that's just. That's really a shame. Uh, do we require, uh, if we put up new stop signs, do we have any signage that we put up warning people that there's a new, uh, I've seen the- It's you know, the the it's like when they're required for 30 days. They're required yeah. for 30 days, right? So we put those up yeah. in both directions. On okay, the so um, there are other intersections though that are being considered for stop for uh, for a new stop sign? No, I'm sorry, no, no there's, there's not- There's nothing really. in inventory that we've already done yeah. that hasn't been codified, okay. Okay. <coughs> so so, so the motion then was to allow public works to install a stop sign. Perhaps we should then we have to retroactively do the ordinance. That's uh, and right. that's fine. That happens all the time. Sure. Sure. Okay. They can put the no, stop no, sign up no. tomorrow and we can pass the ordinance at your next meeting. Or okay. next month, the month after that. Okay. I mean, I can get it ready for your next meeting. If that, that's an easy. Okay. Question. Yeah. I mean, it's, we right. can't enforce it, but at least it sends. At least it's at yeah, least. It's well, it's if you work. You <laughs> I'm okay with it not being be able to be enforced for a short period of time. But yeah. um, are there any questions that the board has at this point? No, I'm going in the recommendations are, of the police and the. Okay. Uh, are there the any board. questions regarding this in the room or in the Zoom room? Madam Chair, can I make one quick question? If sure. they don't have anyone. Mark, were you able to take a look at the uh, the tree line on the other side? Yeah, I 
I'm embarrassed. Thank you. I'll check it later. <laughs> Thank you. A lot of vehicles go through that intersection. I meant to I meant to ask to go over there and look at that today. I forgot to ask. Um, then I'll, I'll call this I'll call this um, question. Then those in favor of uh, directing Public Works to install a stop sign Aye. at this Aye. intersection. Aye. Aye. No post. And I will have an ordinance prepared, and I'll coordinate with Derek as to when that gets passed. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. How about now? We'll do the pickup trucks. Yep. Thank you. Uh, so there's two pickup trucks to be uh, scheduled to be replaced in 2023 uh, because of the CoStar system and uh, the way it's designed. It's looking like it's going to be open November 1st through November 4th. Um, and then it's probably going to be closed because of demand. So what Mark uh, Miller, Public Works Director, is suggesting or, or trying to get done here is the ability to go in there and get into the uh, CoStar bank and and put a uh, put our name in there so we can possibly get these two trucks uh, as quickly as possible as you can realize demand is high right now uh, so he's going to use not not having a, a, a true figure for the trucks but we, we have a number here in the memo that we want to use and he is looking uh, for a go-ahead from the board in order to do that so I can let Mark elaborate on that I could let the board discuss it whatever so true. Okay. My view on this is that uh, these are depreciated. Uh, we've got $92,000 in the 2023 budget to cover the expense. We're estimating the total cost to be a hundred and forty um, net, though, of trade-in uh, would be worst case scenario, uh, $84,000 net. We've got 92 in the budget or best case scenario if we got uh, uh, $35,000 trade-in on, on each. It would be net cost of seventy thousand, both under the budget. So, I'm in favor of uh, the motion. I'm opposed to the motion. Um, at a time when we are desperately trying to close the hole in our 2023 budget, we're at least four hundred thousand dollars short. And at a time when uh, the words tax increase have been bandied about. Um, I think we can uh, nurse these two trucks along, especially if they're worth nearly $30,000 a piece. Um, they're certainly not falling apart. Um, if we have to put money into maintenance, let's put it into maintenance, um, but let's save the 84,000 or whatever the amount is. I'll comment that both trucks have over 100,000 miles on them and both of them have had engine and suspension repairs. Uh, so it's... Uh... I have a Jeep that I drive that has 280,000 miles on it. I've got 284,000 on my Volvo, but that's not the point. Yes. Oh, well, maybe it is. <laughs> Mark, uh, can you tell us what year these trucks were purchased? About 12 years old? The is 11 years old. It's 11 years old. It takes the toll of the trucks. That's what takes the toll. really beats the transmission down. It takes the toll. I am for the purchase of both trucks because it will still be both under budget. If you say that we need it, I like our streets plowed. And um, I'm worried that if we wait another year, they're already eight months behind, then we'll be 20 months until we get a new truck. And then we're looking at essentially 13 year old trucks. Okay. Um. I I um I have mixed feelings about this. I would like to consider um would there be um any movement on the board for purchasing one of the vehicles um when this period of time opens up that we can we can at least purchase one. I understand that. Right. So we could actually approve the purchase 
the, the ordering of them. Just like the grant. So really, just it's just, this is just approving the ordering of two vehicles. And if things were that tight at that time, we could either pass on one or both. Okay. Is there a motion? Mark, question for you. Hypothetically, we got them. Could we sell them for more we bought them for? Today's market? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Believe. Okay. All right. What's just a question? But I'm sure I'd like to make the motion that we approve the ordering of two trucks um, from the vendor to be determined. Thank you. And and friendly amendment with the decision on the actual expenditure to be determined at such time. Friendly amendment. You accept that? Can you accept yeah, that? Accept that yeah. Yeah. And then would there be a second on that? Yeah, second. Okay. All right. Uh, is there any other further discussion on the board here? Uh, is there any discussion in the room regarding the ordering of these two vehicles? Is there any question in the Zoom room regarding the ordering of these two vehicles? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question those in favor of ordering the vehicles as planned. Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, John. All right. All right, uh, Derek, uh, we have to consider the replacement of Mark. We talked about this today, didn't we? The rooftop a, uh, HVAC over for public so, works. Yeah, this, yeah, this is probably a little bit more dire of a situation, but we have uh, rooftop unit for HVAC unit um, above the public works garage uh, really has been failing throughout the year as the memo states. It is a unit that has been in place for 29 years and the unit is fully depreciated. And uh, again, we're, we're asking for the board to consider the uh, purchase of the new unit to take its place. And that is all. Um, I have a question. So delivery time is 36 weeks, weeks, which does not put us in the middle of January. Uh, I think that was a typo, right? So yeah. is it 36 weeks? Yeah, yeah that, was a, that was a typo. Darn it. Sorry about that. So it's going to take us six months to get the new system. And uh, do you have enough bubble gum and duct tape that you're going to be able to hold this thing together? <laughs> 36 weeks, nine months. Big part of this cost too is the crane needed to get up there and put this thing in place. Yeah, but the whole cost is only, it's still only 15,952, including the crane. Yeah. So that's that's a lot better than I had feared it was going to be. Madam Chair, I'd like to make the motion that we purchase the replacement of the rooftop HVAC unit at the cost of $15,952 to Precision and Mechanical Services. Thank you. Is there any other further discussion or questions on the board regarding this unit? No. Are there any questions regarding this in the room or in the Zoom room? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. Those in favor of ordering a new HVAC system? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, Derek. <clears throat> yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. So the next item is pipeline task force letter to elected representatives. Uh, this is a request that came out of the last pipeline task force meeting. Uh, actually, we've been talking about it for a couple of meetings. But so essentially, the, the Homeland Security's ready.gov website has a list of emergency and disasters that could possibly happen to communities. Uh, natural gas liquids event um, that we are all kind of concerned about here in Township of East Goshen is not listed on there. So uh, in discussion with Pipeline Task Force, uh, David's been to, to these meetings as well, myself, uh, the Pipeline Task Force would like to send the attached letter to <clears throat> our two United States Senators, that I have a typo there, I said United State, um, United States Senators, um, Casey and Toomey, Senator Casey and Toomey, and then our local uh, Congresswoman, Christy Houlihan, uh, so they can sort of respond and uh, see that the pipeline task force really would like to have some language amended in the ready.gov list of disasters and emergencies. And it would be sent by me. And uh, let me make a quick comment. Um, you know, FEMA obviously provides resources on emergency response to all of these 
and there are very specific uh, policies and procedures around each one of those. And pipelines is just excluded from it. It's not included. And FEMA <laughs> doesn't have it, first thing. Second thing is, th they, this is a resource to the <clears throat> counties and municipalities, and it's not there for us to even look at or refer to. I mean, we have all their laws and ordinances and all those kinds of things, but we don't have any help with uh, emergency response and, and hazard mitigation. The third thing I'll comment on is that our last meeting, we invited um, uh, the county, um, uh, Mike uh, Gruber, to the meeting, and he's responsible for reviewing the RFPs that the county is doing right now on hazard mitigation and emergency response for pipelines. And they don't have this resource because FEMA doesn't have it available. So that's the reason we, behind this uh, recommendation, this letter. So I'll make the motion uh, that we authorize the township manager to send the attached draft letter to the United States senators, as well as our congresswoman on behalf of the pipeline task force. Second the motion. Are there could, any I, could I offer comments? a friendly amendment there? The letter, not just from the pipeline task force, but from the board of supervisors. I agree with that. Yeah. So you're okay with that, David? Just a comment on that. So how do you, because we started putting letters like this with my name, just so we would have to go back around the ringer and get signatures. Or do you want me to just put board of supervisors, East Coast Demon Manors? I, you know, it's, it's, I, I think the governing body should be on it. I mean, it's great the okay. pipeline task force is on top yeah. of this. But the yeah, governing body we don't need all sign it. You don't, you don't need signatures though. You just want me to put. Okay, okay, perfect. Thank you. I like that amendment. You're okay with it, David? Yeah. Okay. Madam Chair, I just have one quick question. I have yes. on my notes here, David. You made. What's the status of the county study? Yeah, that's kind of a liaison report. Um, we. Uh, the county uh, put out an RFP uh, for a proposal and got none the first round. So they reissued a second RFP oh, and got two responses. RFP so for what, Dave? For uh, county. Uh, what the county has recognized is that an all hazard approach to an NGL pipeline explosion in a densely populated, populated area is not adequate. Right. So they have asked um, the county wants to go out and develop hazard mitigation and emergency response plan for NGL for pipeline explosion um, for the county. And to their credit, they recognize that each one of the municipalities has unique characteristics and they want to develop a bespoke program for each municipality within the context of the hazard mitigation program. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And right now they, they reviewed both of the RFPs and have referred it into their procurement department. And that would be similar to sending it into the DEP. Um, oh boy. <laughs> so when asked, <laughs> when asked the timeline, um, the answer was, we're not sure, uh, but we're working on it. Okay. Thank you. So I, but I think this letter is important to, to support that effort. So that, that's I kind of a pipeline that. liaison report in, in addition yeah, to the good. Thank you. That's a good point. Should they be copied in this letter? I think that's a great idea. Yeah, sure. So another friendly amendment um, from John then? That we copy. That we copy the, the, uh, county. the county on this. That's a good idea. Okay, David, you're okay with those yep. amendments? I'll accept that friendly amendment as well. Okay. Thank you. Fantastic. Are there any other questions or comments from the board? Are there any questions or comments in the room here or in our Zoom room? And seeing none, I'm going to call the question those in favor of uh, passing this um, letter to our Elected officials? Aye. 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 No opposed. Thank you. Um, as is want, I can still change the schedule. Let's go ahead and get rid of these uh, standing issues real quick. And then we'll go back to old business being the, the budget. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I'll start with Hershey's Mill uh, Dam Project. Mm -hmm. So we're, I just followed up with Peter Simone today. I'm still waiting on the maintenance list um, for us. And we're getting a little bit uh, bit of backed up because we're waiting for the as built from the contractor. We can't really finish the punch list until we have those as built. Um, so okay, so how do we put pressure on them? Do we need just, some people to put, to to call them now too? Yeah, that's, okay, that's, that's, so that's we're holding oh, the I like the that. I like that too. That's real. Well, yeah, this is a little okay. easier than deep. Okay, uh, but it's. Uh, one of those okay. things where we'll just keep nagging them and uh, hopefully it'll okay. it'll happen. Uh, but obviously almost complete. Uh, so Milltown Dam project, a couple of things there. I did send out a letter to residents last week 
um, essentially saying that where we are in the process, what's going to happen in the future. Can you tell us where we are in the process? What's going to happen in the future? Yeah. I, I <laughs> so, so actually earlier this week, uh, yesterday and a combination of yesterday and today, I had sent the uh, bid documents into the portal for DCNR. And I also sent, uh, they were requesting hard copies uh, for 11 by 17 of the actual plans because the uh, scan version is too small. So the plans are now, the bid documents are now with uh, DCNR to review, and that's a grant requirement. DC Department of Conservation Natural Resources. Uh, Natural Resources. So they are, are, we have three grants. They're one of the agencies. They're, I don't know, what, I, mean, I don't mean this in a negative way. They're, they're the biggest sticklers as far as grant requirements and, and making sure you're doing what, you, what needs to be done from a grant perspective. So they have the bid documents now, and I'm hoping if I can follow up with them um, every week and see where they are, that within the next month, they'll be done reviewing the bid documents. From there, we will go to uh, bid, and we will be using pen bid just like they did for Hershey's Mill mm -hmm. Dam. Is the engineering all done? Uh, the engineering is done on this project, yeah. Totally it's, done. Okay. It's, it, it's been done. That's yeah. another. That's, yeah. yeah. I don't think people know that, and that's a nice thing to know. Well, that's yeah. what I said. I thought most of the engineering was done by Gannett Fleming. Yeah. 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 And it's, that's why you see so many calls by Gannett Fleming. I mean, I know it doesn't look like not, not, it looks like nothing's being done when there's nothing in the ground yet. Yeah. But I mean, there's a lot of legwork into these projects. We were asked at the planning commission meeting how how it was going, and we really didn't know. Yeah. Uh, is it possible maybe to put that in the uh, in the uh, East Ocean website or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we can do that. I can. Um, can I take I'd that like, letter and. I'd like to go a step further and make sure that that letter has gone down to the planning commission and that they have received all of them have received a copy of that letter electronically sure can you please make that happen yep absolutely yeah. so after we go so again i'm hoping you know if we can get the uh, approval back from dcnr within the next month dep and dced uh, dp you know i don't have to tell you that yeah, after no. <laughs> uh, dced is department of community and economic development they they process a lot of grants those two are actually believe it or not, a little easier than DCNR with getting bid documents approved. So when we get when we get everything approved from the state grant standpoint, we will then go out to bid on pen bid. Um, I'm really, really hoping to get a contractor in place by the end of the year, because as I said in the letter to the residents, my goal would be sometime in January after we have a contractor on board to do a town hall style Q&A with the contractor with uh, residents that live in that area to let them know you know, when construction starts, what it's going to be like when construction's there, um, you know, Good. how to contact whoever if there's issues. So um, really like to do that town hall in January, the latest first half of February. So that's sort of our timeline. I explained all of this in the letter. Um, I don't think I explained the ped bid thing, but I thought that was getting too much into the weeds. Okay. Um, but so that's that's where we are right now. Good. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, Great. Is that it on the Milltown Dam? That is it. Yes. I have a request. Sure. Uh, a, a letter C. Um, the um, Hershey Mill Estates uh, broken sewer uh, sewer, pipe. sewer project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like I'd like to see an update on that if if we can regularly. Sure. Well, that's progress. Good. That's going to be the local staming grant, state state gaming grants money that we're supposed to hear about in November sometime. Great. Um, and I've been told by three or four people, Mark, that we have to wait till the ground gets solid. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I Those think people you've, weren't wrong. I think you've spread that word. Um, the point I want to make here is that you're doing a great job. Uh, the township is, and and you are. Um, I don't think we're telling people that enough. And and if it's not the website, uh, our, our letter, um, let's find a way to make people aware of what's getting done because a lot's getting done. That's yep. a good idea. That's a great idea. Um, okay, now we're going to jump back to continuing the budget discussion. Dave, are you gonna take this over? 
sure. Derek, I don't know if you want to pull up that part of the agenda. <clears throat> so focusing back on um, the net result that we've got looking at a 2020 three budget uh, in the general funds, as well as some of the capital plans that we've got going the next two years, 2023, 2024. Um, we can skip, uh, this is just trying to make the point that um, we are down about $740,000. Um, inflation is up um, over 24% cumulatively since 2012. Um, we haven't had a tax increase since 2024. We are 2004. 2004. Uh, yeah, I jumped the gun on that one. And um, you can go to the next slide. A lot of this uh, expense, especially in 2023, is is primarily driven through our state, um, our public safety, our WeGo budget, our fire, uh, Goshen Fire, Malvern Fire, and EMS services through uh, through both of those, as well as um, Good Fellowship services. Um, can go to the next one. So this is just illuminating all the different revenues and all of our sources. The primary one we get is in earned income tax. Uh, the next closest one is real estate property tax. Um, real, estate real estate transfer is is usually between 750 to 850, depending on the prices of real estate and what's selling. Uh, everything else is pretty small dollars as far as what we can change. Um, we've got some permit fees, parks and rec, um, classes and things like that but those are those will be addressed also in our our reorg meeting when we examine new fees uh, schedules uh, we're looking at some things with permits also with um, the zoning uh, department and Dwayne uh, you can go to the next one and Dave what do you expect that we're going to be discussing those the, the fee schedule change with uh, Dwayne and well we I mean, we would just be presenting that to you at the reorganization. As a so in January. So I'll be dealing yeah, January, with, yes. we'll all be talking about it internally from November, December. Okay. I mean, the process has already started. So okay, Jason's good. looking at his, Mark's looking at things, Dwayne's looking at stuff, and so okay. am I. And then Great. we'll bring it all together. Um, revenue tra trends um, pretty much bears out everything else that we've seen. Um, revenue is pretty flat. We've had a little bit of a jump with EIT um, starting in, 2021 primarily and um, we're hoping it looks like it's going to continue through this year um, and I'm currently projecting um, five and a half million for that in 2023 it's kind of hit or miss we are hoping that it continues but it's not a sure thing uh, go to the next you can see public safety obviously that's our absolute biggest expense um, by department, 98% of that public safety budget is fire and police, 87% being police. Uh, the revenue is, is staying pretty flat in my projections and <coughs> public safety is going up. Uh, all of our insurance expenses are going up and inflation is driving most of our services and material goods costs up. Um, currently, I've got kind of an average of about three and a half percent inflation for 2023. Um, that looks to be pretty good number, kind of aggressive, but um, we're hoping that December closes out and we're not anywhere close to the 8% that we've seen um, recently this year for the 12, 12 month trailing period. Um, the police expense and budget is still underway in discussions. Um, there are new personnel and SRO and admin and um, other items, technology driven and, and a shed that um, they've asked for in that. So we'll have ongoing meetings with them about that. So we've got some different options. Um, one option would be to close the $740,000 gap with revenue increases and options for decreases. So we could assume that everything that I've got is okay. And we assume that our interest income gets boosted because we've seen rates jump up and they're actually projecting to jump possibly another 
2.75 basis and um, possibly even next year, another 0.5. Um, that would be good for our interest income, not as good for inflation. Um, well, it'll eventually drive inflation down, but it'll be tougher in a while. So we've got um, a 0.5 real estate tax millage would increase about $800,000 a year. That would be a total of 850. Um, and then you would add back in all of the options that I had for expenses and also uh, assume a 1% inflationary cost adjustment. So say we go to four and a half percent outside the police budget and every um, and the uh, fire expense and the so basically public safety and insurance everything else we would assume would go up another percent and we would still be covered there um, down at the bottom I've got uh, how much a 0.5 real estate tax millage increases uh, each mill is about 160,000 of township revenue the average East Ocean Township uh, value of an assessed uh, single family dwelling with the county is 250,000. So that's a current payment of about 312.50 per year in real estate property tax. Uh, the impact of the suggestion of a 0.5 millage increase, which is a 40% jump from the 1.25 current rate is $800,000 of revenue and an average increase of $125 per year uh, for each single family dwelling, dwelling resident. Um, some other examples, I've got Summit House and Cider Knoll. That increase would be about another $37.50 per year. Williams Way would be about $100 per year. Uh, villages at Hershey's Mill, based on their average assessment between one and 200,000 could be uh, $50 to $100 per year. Bow Tree would probably go up around $137.50 and Clock Tower would be about $187.50 per year. So that's just one possible option. This option um, is assuming we just changed the one uh, millage either in 2023 or the impact if we delayed it until 2024. So you can see uh, without a change, our projected deficit in 2025 is up to $500,000. Um, we're over a million dollars by 2027. Implementing the tax increase would keep us uh, level set until 2026, um, and then a possible deficit in 2028 and beyond, um, still maintaining a solid fund balance of about $5.7 million. And um, that, this would be assessed every year, no matter what, we're always gonna look every year, um, depending on whether there's an increase or not, or how much the increase is to level set and see what needs to be done um, to continue funding our capital reserve from the general fund budget, maintaining our operational reserve at 5% or greater um, and keeping at least the 20% fund balance reserve. Uh, the 20% fund balance reserve is about double what um, the GFOA has. GFOA is assuming we would really just be able to run the township for about two months. Um, if you know natural disaster, everything gets wiped out how long can you run the township? So they say you should have two months in reserves. Total between operating reserve and our existing uh, general fund balance, we've got about five months. Uh, another option that we could consider to close this gap would be to increase, make a little bit more rosy colored glasses for some of these revenue projections, um, boost up EIT by $150,000, $75,000 in interest income, uh, increase our building permit projection and, and assume that that continues strong. Um, with some of the known sewer projects, it looks like we could probably have another $24,000 to $30,000, um, which would be recharged to sewer customers um, for administrative work and increase our state pension aid numbers. Um, they just released those. Uh, and then the, we could also put in a, a small 0.25 real estate tax millage, and that would be about $400,000, and the imp average impact per person would be about $62.50 per year. Um, options for an expense decrease. Um, so I'll be clear, these expenses are outside of contributions to Goshen Fire and Good Fellowship in Malvern. Outside of those, these $5,000 expenses are really just hoping 
that the expenses come in lower. Um, when we have to fix a traffic signal or take down a tree that's dangerous in somebody's uh, backyard and it's on our right away, then we have to pay the bill and regardless of what it's gonna cost, um, just like we've been doing all along. We've got the HVAC has to be done. The guys in public works did a great job. Um, the other day they were down in um, the park along where the trail is, bridge is failing. And they were able to, in a single day, bypass the rotten bridge, dig out, put down stone and pave a bypass pathway so people wouldn't be caught on Pagoli Pike trying to jump around the trail. Um, so safety is a big issue. So the reality is we can put the expense decreases in there, but whether or not they're actually gonna happen, we can't really know until next year, and see what the inflation rates are, see what costs are and see what actually fails and doesn't fail in the township. Um, that's option two. And I've got, you guys can look at your packets, but there's all those same millage um, impacts, Summit House 1875 a year, uh, villages at Hershey's Mill, $25 to $50 a year. Everything's basically just cut in half. Um, you can see the fund balance is this way. It's a slower, but then you're looking at probably a lot more um, tax increases stepping up. Um, do one in 2023, another one in 2025, when you're already a half a million dollars back on deficit. Um, and then by 2027, you're a million dollars in deficit again. So you can see the fund balances depreciate a lot quicker in these scenarios. Um, not as financially sound, but it's still an option. Uh, you wanna look at the next one. And third option to consider is for revenue increases, we could increase EIT um, projection. We could increase our interest income, building permit projection, sewer and pension state aid. Um, and instead of a tax increase, use existing general fund balance to fill that gap. Um, from all the long-term plan projections that I've done, it's a temporary fix. It is an option. Um, long-term, our expenses are gonna outpace our revenue sizably. Um, so this would be a temporary solution. Options for expense decrease, keep those all the same. And this would also close the gap, um, no tax increase. So those are just a couple scenarios. You can use any combination of the two, but essentially we can get between three and $400,000 of this gap closed by rosier revenue projections and the outstanding amount is probably either using fund balance or a tax increase um, or just hoping that expenses come in lower. But even, even that's not gonna really move the needle on the amount of expenses that we're looking at. Dave, I just want to say thank you for all the work that you've done on putting this uh, together. This is just um, sure. It's it's uh, it's a lot of numbers. It's a lot of work. Um, I wanted to just say first of all, thank you. Like I said, thank Absolutely. you very much. Um, and um, I just caution that we should consider that there are some people out there who cannot afford a tax increase. So. I know that Mike has a couple of things he wanted to say. And um, Mike, if you wanna go ahead and make your statement. Yes, no, this is, uh, folks, this is a bit of a story. It's gonna take some time. So I'm gonna need probably 10 minutes or more. Uh, we've had lots of residents in the six years I've been on giving lots of public comment. This is an important issue. I'm gonna be uh, reading this statement. It's gonna take uh, some minutes. Uh, so here we go. Uh, these are some my reasons, explanations, et cetera, regarding the 2023 budget. Here's some background and summary. Upon review and detailed discussions with our East Goshen uh, Township Director, Finance Township Manager um, of the 2023 preliminary budget, the general fund long term projection, our 10 year projection, looking at capital reserve fund funding, the historical trend, looking back data going back nearly 20 years, and recommendations from the township 
professional staff tax revenue enhancement in the form of a property real estate tax millage increases warranted commencing with 2023 and effective 1-123 for the following reasons. Inflation, cost of living, build out suburban municipality, aging population, flat revenue versus increasing costs. Since 2004, the last tax increase, the aggregate inflation rate has been 47 plus percent. This does not include the projected 2022 inflation index of 8.2 percent. Social Security just announced that uh, it's going to be 8.7 percent increase for next year. From 12, 2012 through 2021, the Township General Fund revenue has increased an aggregate of 7%, while expenditures have, inc have increased 31 plus percent during the same aggregate period. Cumulative inflation during this period is 25%. East Goshen now for practical purposes of financial planning is a fully built out developed suburban municipality with an aging population and aging infrastructure. East Goshen population uh, now in 2020 at uh, 18,162, 41% uh, of our population is 60 and older. Uh, that's a median age of uh, 52.8, uh, which is 1.3 times higher than both Chester County and Pennsylvania. Um, the general fund long range plan. This 10 year projection, October 2022, forecasts an annual operating deficit every year through 2033 at an increasing amount commencing in 2023 at $402,000. That's the preliminary. Uh, preliminarily, we've talked about the 740 deficit. So we haven't had consensus on this 2023 potential deficit of 402,000 adjusted. And it, uh, the projection indicates the, uh, the deficit is going to increase by 2033 to $3.533 million. The projection, in my opinion, is utilize reasonable assumptions for inflation and related revenue and expense estimates. The 10 year projection does not include any substantial increases in capital reserve funding. Local enabling tax revenue, our real estate ta transfer tax, or real estate tax, our EIT, LST, the projection, um, uh, an annual average increase of 0.4%. Uh, while expenditures are looking to increase 2.7% according to the 10 year projection. The capital reserve fund projection indicates that with the continued contribution via intrafund transfer from the general fund of $385,000, that the capital reserve fund is projected to decrease to between $1.2 and $1.5 million by the end of 2024, or an approximate 75% decrease in the fund balance over the 10 years over 10 years with the assumption of no added general fund transfer funding or, or grants, which are unknown and unpredictable. Capital uh, reserve fund is dependent solely on contributions from the general fund. The current capital reserve fund is based primarily on schedule of funding, existing, wasting or depreciating assets, our building, fleet, major facility components, not new projects or major improvements or added assets. The capital reserve fund balance trend since 2012 shows an annual decline from 6.59 million to 4.37 in 2022. The capital reserve fund does not have funds available to support the Milltown Dam project rehabilitation, possible cost of $5 million, we don't know yet, nor the completion of the Paoli Pike Trail segment B alternative, which has been discussed with a possible estimated cost median range of two and a half million dollars as examples of just two major projects deemed beneficial by many township residents. About existing fund balances and use of general fund equity or savings to balance the budget. At a recent board of supervisors meeting last month 927 during presentation of the 23 budget, uh, there were lots of numerous uh, numbers discussed circled back to the projected budget deficit and how to close the gap in the short term using existing fund balances. There was public comment with reference to current fund balances and a large pot of money of the township that, the, that the township is holding. Mm -hmm. Municipal governments use multi-fund financial and accounting management, except for the general fund and the operating reserve fund. Each of the 10 plus East Goshen funds is earmarked for particular uses other than the general fund expenses and is authorized and provided in the second class township code. The general fund is the principal operating budget fund of the municipal government, and there is township policy to regulate the minimum maintenance amounts before governing body action is required. 
Again, the capital reserve fund is sustained by the general fund and all of its funds are based on the capital replacement schedule or specifically defined projects. Liquid fuels fund is a state regulated fund and audited annually or every other year. Uh, and that those funds are transferred to the general fund over the course of the year. The transportation fund uh, was used to, has been used to support certain limited projects with a specific indication of transportation boot road, the recent lane um, gain and the restriping is an example. This fund accreted in the 80s and the 90s from new development impact fees imposed. Uh, That's now a, a dying fund. It's no longer has a revenue source. The sewer operating reserve funds are enterprise funds independent from the general fund supported by the resident customers. Uh, and these fees are not transferable to the general fund. The refuse fund, refuse fund is the same an enterprise fund, it's independent from the general fund and supported exclusively from resident user fees. Use of unappropriated general fund balance to balance the annual operating fund budget. It is permissible uh, under the second class code to use unappropriated fund balance, but the second class code does require in any event an annual balance budget to use, um, to use these funds. However, the 10 year general fund projection illustrates this as neither a best financial practice nor a sustainable one. According to the East Ocean Director of Finance, all fund balances are projected to decrease a total of over $7 million from 2021 through the end of 2023. The township is utilizing the funds from capital reserve, sewer operating and reserve, uh, bond and ARPA for a variety of projects highlighted at the public meeting on 927 to offset otherwise funding by the general fund. Past surpluses, expense monitoring, borrowing, and prudent investment has allowed East Goshen to avoid a tax millage increase for 20 years, even with the multitude of projects undertaken during these years. However, without a new revenue source or increased revenue from an existing source, the township cannot sustain the current operations and service profile, including the provision of the increased expense demands of exceptional police, fire, first responder services expected by residents, taxpayers, and their lifestyles in a prosperous suburban municipality without draconian expenditure cuts and reduction in their services. Using public safety as an example, and it was kind of highlighted earlier, public, expense, public safety expenses currently comprise 40% of the general fund expenditures, 10% increase in police, fire, and EMS from 2022 to 23 make up 60% or $440,000 of the current $740,000 deficit. The general fund long range plan, the 10 year projection, estimates public safety budget expenses to increase from 4.63 million in 2022 to seven, over $7 million by 2033, a 52% annual, an average annual increase of 3.4%, while revenue is projected to increase 0.4% in the same period. Debt obligations. East Goshen Township incurred over $8 million in 2017 of debt for both general and sewer projects, which $5.6 million, 70% has been expended and which needs to be repaid by 2037. The public sewer operations and system also has further independent debt obligations in excess of $10 million through 2037. Again, the township infrastructure is aging and sound long-term planning with measured funding is necessary and in my opinion, essential to maintain, sustain, and in some instances, enhance and improve the quality of life of the 18,162 residents of the township. And even if some of the residents do not use some of these services or facilities, it's about community and community requires a holistic approach and sensibility. And with aging infrastructure and despite best efforts to cap capture replacement costs, there is a reasonable probability that unplanned infrastructure failure will occur. The sewer main collapse in Hershey's Mill Estates in 2021 is a recent example with a price tag currently at one and a half million dollars. If township funds are not available to address the infrastructure needs and grants are unreliable and as a revenue source, more debt and borrowing will be necessary. Support basis for revenue enhancement commencing 2023 with real estate tax. I'm supporting a half mill property tax increase for 2023 to be followed by annual careful assessments by the director of finance and township manager in concert with the board of supervisors to determine the need for future tax or new source township revenues. And through this annual due diligence, provide transparent, accessible and accountable interaction 
uh, and outreach to the residents and thereby undertake timely and effective financial response management and thereby avoid reactive tumult and avoid the pedestrian expression of kicking the can down the road due to political optics or other unsound procrastinations. And to be realistic, it should be stated that additional revenue enhance enhancements via property tax millage increases will be necessary before the end of this decade and into the future. The inevitability of increasing costs for government, business, and households is inescapable, and local governments cannot be orphaned, ignored, or kicked down the road. I can let you know that municipalities, as I conclude here, such as uh, East Bradford Township is at 1.75 mills, West Goshen Township, our neighbor, at 2.0 mills, uh, West Town Township is at 3.5 mills, Kennett Township, many of you know folks there, and fine municipality, two and a half mills. West Vincent Township, Chester Springs area, two mills plus. Willistown Township has 0.28 mills property tax. Why? Because Willistown is in the Great Valley School District, and Great Valley School District doesn't collect EIT currently, so they're keeping the full 1%. Lucky Willistown. I hope the Great Valley School District doesn't decide that they're going to start collecting EIT. For different, 2.5 mils plus. And for perspective, Westchester Borough is at 7.7 .7 mils, more than five times what it is here. Chester County is 4.55 mils. Westchester Area School District, the lowest property tax millage in the county is at 22.4364 mils. They have all increased their millage over time. It's time here based upon the projections, and that's my position statement for, for this year's budget coming. Mike, um, apparently the recording equipment wasn't working. Could you repeat that, please? <laughs> yes, I would be pleased to. I can do that at the November meeting and the December one. David, do you have something that you wanted to say? Yeah, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, In uh, 1817, Goshenville was di uh, divided into West Goshen and East Goshen, and in its 250 years, it's transformed from a rural farming beginnings to a suburbanized community. The building boom occurred in late 1970 and, and through 1980, when developers bought up farms and land and, and built housing developments to meet the demand for the American dream of owning a single family home with a bit of land, a two-car garage to accommodate our auto-centric lifestyle. Um, building permits were purchased and developers paid impact fees to the township to help maintain the infrastructure. It would then turn back to the township when the houses were sold. As it turns out, this now can be called the growth Ponzi scheme. What we had was we built developments, and we got impact fees and earned income tax, and we built another one, collected impact fees to pay for the infrastructure that was turned over to us. And that, and I don't mean Ponzi scheme in a criminal sense, just in a metaphorical sense. And what's happened now is the underlying financial mechanism of East Goshen's suburban era operates like a classic Ponzi scheme where ongoing rates of growth are necessary to maintain our long-term infrastructure. The problem is we have no future growth prospects because we are a built out community. So what we're gonna face is what I'm calling a financial inversion. Our, and now our problem is that growth capacity has come to a halt in East Goshen Township with a few exceptions, but the liabilities remain and are unfunded or underfunded. What happens when the revenue collected doesn't come near the amount needed to cover the accumulated liabilities. East Goshen has now entered the threshold of that financial inversion where growth in the revenue um, and the revenue infusion that comes with it is no longer possible. And revenue sources are flat while inflation and crumbling infrastructure stares us down the barrel. Let me demonstrate kind of a microcosm of one typical development. I live in Hershey's Mill Estates. So what I did was we have 141 homes in our, in our township. So I looked at that in our, uh, in our development. 
So what I did was the total number of houses compared to uh, uh, her, uh, the township in total is about 2% uh, of the total homes. The number of residents in our town in our community is about 2.37% of the total residents in East Goshen. And our estimated assessed value of our houses in Hershey's Mill Estates is about 2.39% of the total uh, East Goshen. So I took those percentages and then I looked at the estimated revenue from my own neighborhood of 144 houses. And what I came up with, and I won't go into all the detail if anyone wants to look at this, uh, they can. Um, per household in earned income tax, real estate transfer, real estate taxes, cable franchise fees, and so on, is about $1,188 dollars per household. Then I took public works, administration, emergency services, all the expenses and divided that. Bottom line is that we, our income to the township is estimated allocated about $1,188. Our expenses allocated are $1,458 or negative $270 per household times 144 households, times, um, that, that means that Hershey's Mill Estates basically on an allocated basis cost the township about $38,888 a year. In other words, our taxes don't cover the infrastructure that we built in 1980, bottom line. I know a lot of people talked about being on a fixed income. I'm in that boat as well. I'm retired eight years and I'm on a fixed income. Um, guess who else is on a fixed income? The township. Uh, our in earned income tax is flat. Um, our, um, we haven't had a, a real estate tax increase in, uh, since 2004. Um, as Mike mentioned, the accumulative um, inflation is... Um, 47, 48% over that same period of time. If you apply that inflation percent to the 1.25 mills we have now, would be a 1.83 uh, mills uh, re required to uh, just keep up with inflation. Um, so bottom line is that what can we do? Um, we have limited number of revenue sources. We have earned income tax, real estate tax, real estate transfer, permit, revenue, cable franchise fees, and a few other minor sources. We could have a stormwater tax, affectionately known as a rain tax. Everyone loves them. Uh, or we could have permitted an emergency services tax. We could tax to cover our emergency services. Nobody has an appetite for those, for new taxes in East Goshen Township. We're not proposing that at all. So to balance the budget, and continue it off the services that East Goshen residents enjoy and have come to expect. We can increase revenue, decrease expenses, borrow capital, or use our reserves or a combination of uh, some or all of those techniques. And that's what your board of supervisors is dealing with during this budget cycle. Having said all of that, I'm also in favor of a 50 a 0.50 increase to 1.75 tax effective January 1st, 2023. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna make a statement as well. It's gonna hopefully be a little bit, a little bit briefer. Um, no good tax ever goes away. 2003, we were uh, forced to accept a tax to pay for open space. And uh, we were promised, at least verbally, by a number of supervisors at that time, that the tax would go away in about 2019. And uh, that was promised by passport. It never happened. Um, as for the reserves, uh, for, the, for the infrastructure, that was uh, the impact fees that were collected, um, those impact fees should have been uh, utilized, exercised well before uh, now. Uh, to take care of some of the aging infrastructure. So shame on passports for not and not doing that. Uh, we have to look at department budgets. We need to consider if there are some line items that we can consider for elimination. 
Uh, we have to cut back on large unneeded projects. Um, there are a lot of things that you're that the public is not yet aware of uh, as far as mo moving parts of the various budgets, the WeGo budget, our budget as well. And when grants come into play, um, some monies are freed up. And so there could be um, less of an obligation for um, East, East Goshen and West Town to have to uh, contribute potentially in 2023, um, but that is pending um, grants that have been applied for. So that would allow a smaller transfer of reserves that could cover that um, small, smaller gap, but we have to tighten our belts. And while many in this township are well off, <coughs> the residents in the Rose Hill apartments, the, met, the metropolitan complexes, the new Kent apartments, the condos of Cider Knoll, Summit House, High Spire, Treetops, Goshen Valley, all, and all the condo communities I have not mentioned, um, those people, a lot of them are, are really struggling to make ends meet. We've already raised their sewer rates by $20 a quarter, that's $80 a year. And people who are on fixed incomes have varying um, reserves. And some of, some of our residents have no reserves. They're living paycheck to paycheck and they're living on a very strict budget. There are so many people in our community who are reaching out to food cupboards that have never done so in the past. And that's just to close some of their budget shortfalls at home. So I really have to say that it, at this point, I think that there's still work to do. It is only October. We don't have to pass the budget until December. There's work we can do that we should be doing before we consider a tax increase. It's just uh, not something that I am I, I find palatable at this point. Um, I think we need to look at each budget year individually as well as uh, our long-term projections. Yes, we have aging infrastructure. So we have to attend to those things as they come up. There will be a tax increase at some point. Um, unfortunately, it's just a matter of, I, I, I think that it's onerous to, to inflict it this year um, when people are already struggling and dealing with inflationary rates that are just astronomical and, and, and just historically um, unheard of. I, 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 I just cannot, I cannot poss possibly support tax increase at this time until we have done the work by really looking at this budget and determining where we can find some room. So that's all I have to say. Do you have anything else to say, guys? I'm gonna... Thanks, Madam Chair. I'll make this brief as well. I want to echo the thankfulness to Derek, Dave, Chris, the rest of the staff for everything they've done. I also want to thank the Board of Supervisors. I know that we've all, you know, dived into this quite a bit. I know we spoke on staff a lot of it, and I know we all have the same goal, which is to make this place a great place to live and keep it as is. Uh, right now, I'm not sure where I stand, and the reasons are is because I do believe a tax increase is imminent. I don't know when that is, whether it's this year or next year. I think uh, Dave put out um, not only where we're going to stand the next 10 years in regards to uh, revenue, but expenses as well, and I'll get back to expenses. Uh, right now, supervisors already have touched on the inflation rate of aggregated 47% since the last tax increase. Um, this current upcoming budget, the increase 60% of that is for our first responders. Uh, that's, some, that's a priority to me and the rest of the residents to ensure that if there's an emergency that someone from the Goshen Fire Co., one of the other fire companies, and also the, someone from the police show up. Uh, Dave has also done an excellent job for the options for expense decrease, which is anywhere mm -hmm. for the public to consume. Uh, my mm -hmm. concern is most of these are services that would have to be cut, whether it's, you know, if it's snow materials budget, if it snows, we're still going to have to pay the bill. If a traffic light goes out, like the one down near me yesterday, it's going to have to be paid. A lot of these, if the bills come, we're going to have to pay them regardless if they're budgeted or not. Um, I don't need to touch on the aging infrastructure and things of that nature. Uh, I'll wrap up with saying two things. One, the EIT will always be impacted in East Goshen due to the uh, residents' ages in regards to Hershey's Mill and the retirement, the high retirement we have in the township. Um, and then also the proposed increase of half a mill, which is $125 on average a house equals to $2.62 a week. And I understand people are struggling, but uh, 1048 a month and 262 a week is is what we'd be facing to ensure that our services don't get cut and um, you know we don't kick the can down any further. So at this point, I'm not sure where I stand. 
That's all I have, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Thank you. John, do you have anything or no? No. Uh, I'm against tax increase. Um, I'll never say never, but uh, I think we have a lot of work to do on the budget before we vote on it. Okay. Um, are there any uh, other matters that we need to bring up this evening? Uh, public comment. Do any people in the room have a comment? Please come on up. You know the deal. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have to hear every hear, hear everybody pontificate on what to do about taxes or not to do about taxes. I'm kind of embarrassed to bring up what I'm going to bring up, but Michelle, like you said, no tax goes undone, so no speech writing that I've done will ever be not for not said. <laughs> um, first, I want to thank Dave and Chris for all the help that they did give me, answer my questions to this tax on the uh, excuse me. Wrong word, the service bill for the uh, trash and uh, and the uh, sewer. Um, so I wanted to find out what differentiates, what's the difference between a tax and a service fee? I looked up and Googled it, and what are taxes? Taxes are mandatory contributions levied on individuals or corporations by a government entity, you guys whether it's local, regional, or national tax revenues, finances, government activities, including public works and services such as roads, schools, programs, and Social Security and Medicare. For this reason is while, that's why I wanna bring this up. Earlier, I asked about the sewer fee and why is it not considered a tax? And I was told by one of the members of the board that it is not a tax, it is actually a service provided to the residents. So why is my, why is it that when I, because you want to change the thing to a monthly change from what I heard at one of the last meetings. We don't know. Well, yeah, you don't know, but it was brought up. We do it on this, the second and third quarters aren't part of this calculation. So in the second and third quarters, you know, I fill my pool, water my garden, water my yard, and yet what kind of service do you provide for that volume going out? Because that goes right back to the water table. So I figured that this is really a tax, but you hide behind the thing that's called a service. And yet you talked about for a couple, for an hour or so about raising taxes and you raise when you raise these sewer bills, you're actually raising taxes for individuals. Why do we hide behind a thing just because of a word called a sewer bill? It is actually a tax. You're providing us a service for our use of water and sanitary um, cleanup. So uh, that's what I have to say about that because it's always been a pet peeve of mine. Um, if I might comment, Russ, mm -hmm. uh, this township didn't make the uh, nomenclature. That's been used in municipal government and government uh, uh, providers for decades and decades and decades. So we didn't we didn't make that up. That's just the nomenclature and the, the that we've been using all along. I I I, I disagree uh, with that your premise that it is a a, a service or a sewer or refuse paid directly to pay for that service is a tax. It's, it's well, I guess we're, we're taxed by Verizon, we're taxed by Pico, we're taxed by um, everybody else we use too, if you, if you use that kind of rationale. Well, if, if you're using a phone, that's kind of, you don't have to have a phone. Right. It's not a tax, it's a, that's a user service. Well there, I mean, well, there you go, there you go. So you need it, you, you obviously but, need that, but it's not a tax, don't. it's a service, it, you, don't. you know. I mean, it's it's but you don't it's nonsensical, a, frankly. Don't need a, don't need a phone. Sorry. Okay. Uh, another question I have on your budget is that you break out mills uh, on option, consider option two into five different areas. Uh, one of those areas is Hershey Mills. My real question is, does Hershey Mills receive any special benefits versus regular residents? You mean question. you mean within the walls of Hershey's Mill? Yeah. It, it seems to me that they get some special kind of services that other residents don't get. Like what? Like what? I don't know. So I'm asking the question. Oh, if I knew the answer, I wouldn't ask the question, Mike. In fact, if you go to most villages of Hershey's Mill residents, 
they'll <laughs> say that they pay taxes for a lot of things that they that don't, they don't get. get. Yeah, exactly. It's no different than my kids did not go to the Westchester Area School District, but over is the, that is that why they're the forty years? I don't know how much we paid in. Is you that why their three? millage is so much lower than the rest of the households? It's based on assessment property based value. Oh, well, maybe that's the wrong word. Is that why their assessment is based differently than the rest of the households? No, They're not no. based differently. It varies depending on what neighbor, different neighborhoods have different uh, cost of homes being yeah, put I mean, in. There's, so the assessed value is different. They have they have quad they have quadplexes and they have townhomes. They have got twins. And they've got singles. It just depends on. <laughs> it depends on what they what they purchase. Just and and Dave's analysis was trying to give uh, they aren't hard and fast rules with the assessed value. It's trying to give you an idea of what different neighborhoods would pay based right. on the average yeah. in that neighborhood averages. Yeah, and the, rest of the common level ratio in Chester County is uh, 30, 39. 39. 39.5 now, 39. 5, right. and so that's kind of what you use as far as if your your house is assisted say $100,000, you divide that by 0.9395, and they say, that's what it would sell for. Okay. Then and that's still oh, probably low. Then the last thing I had is that. Oh, yeah. The last thing I have, Dave, is that you're projecting out to 2033 with big millions, go, millions going up every couple of years. If your projections change where we now are collecting way too much money, will the millage go down? Or is it once it's there, it's always there? No, I've I looked at other I looked at other townships. Their millage has gone up and down based on whether they have more development go in. Um, but Kennett in 20, 2009 dropped down for a couple of period of years, and then they went back up in. Now they're up about seventy percent. But I mean, it's it depends on what's happening. Authority to bring it down. Okay. Thank you again. Thanks, Russ. Thanks, Russ. Hey, Joe, did you have any comments? Yeah. One up. Oh. I just wanted to offset some of the expense of just the uh, township through their insurance program, uh, property insurance, single limit. Derek? Are you still with MRM? For property liability, we were, we were with MRM, yes. How about property? Yes. Uh, in, your, in your property uh, policy, do you have uh, infrastructure or sewer? I know we have infrastructure. I don't know if the sewer is covered differently or if it's under it. I think it's under all the same property liability. So if you have a sewer collapse, is that covered? No, that's general maintenance. That has nothing to do with it's general sewer. maintenance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, if, if you're if you're saying a sewer, you know, a, a, a small plane went and crushed our sewer, that would be a different scenario. But just a general maintenance for how about pipeline vibration? I'd have to look. I mean, when you get into these specifics about our insurance policy, Joe, I really would need the, the document in front of me. I, I mean, I can't okay. sit up here and just well, answer I, these I specific. I think you'll find that uh, your sewer is probably covered. Probably. I just don't want to speak out of turn. And other infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of times you have to put little pieces of the puzzle together in order to get coverage. But a collapse, a collapse. Say it again. Except if you can, if if there's any other cause of a collapse other than wear and tear, I, I believe your policy would owe it. So you, you it's very difficult to say that age caused the collapse. A forty-five-year-old system. It doesn't matter. Is that, is that uh, structure is a structure. Not sudden, it's not uh, sudden and accidental, so it's. Uh, all right. Well, let, 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 let's hold off on this. Well, all I'm there, saying there, is this could, this, 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 no, no, I, find out this could help you plan or reserve for um, this kind of occurrence. I, I can ask our carrier, but I can tell you I've had. I, you know, just ask your carrier. And, yeah, and do you have yeah, business yeah. interruption? I think it's a good question yeah. to ask, Joe. Yeah, I, yeah, I, no, I think we should question. ask it. But, uh, to, do you to, have to, business interruption? If if there's a sewer pipe collapse, it depends on what the specific of the collapse is. Okay, if there's have... a natural calamity or something like that, which causes well, we were just talking about sewer pipes. So what what, what 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 specific 
it, you have to pay your revenue. That's business interruption. Oh, so now it might be phrased the, differently in, in, in your casualty program. The but the now. point is exactly. you're covered General, with generally. insurance. So you don't necessarily need that reserve. It would depend on what it is, I guess, yeah. and what causes it. But uh, yeah, different buildings and stuff are, are covered under different well, policies. Well, not only that, but you had said that you were <clears throat> covering <throat> expenses if the um, a township couldn't operate for a couple months. With reserves, yes. Okay, well, that could be business interruption under right. the property program. Uh, unless it's right. A, uh, God an act of God or COVID. Right. So in, in, a, in effect, you wouldn't know that. Yeah. So. Well, or it depends if it's cyber liability or so terrorism. Or... Business interruption uh, covers loss of profits. Doesn't mm. cover loss of revenue. Unless that, it's that's if it's designed for a commercial so, entity. And if we have, this this is a township, a so public what kind of, entity. What kind of business interruption will we have that would be covered loss? Related what? to a sewer. I'm not, what do you mean? I'm not talking about a business interruption for a sewer. Uh, Dave had mentioned that if the township had a catastrophe, he had a reserve to pay for expenses during the time the township was down. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's business interruption. That's what I mean. So you don't right. need the reserve, it's, it's or not, you can utilize the reserve. And it's not way. because there's no interruption of revenue source. We would still collect taxes. We would still collect <laughs> all those. There, there would be no loss of revenue, so there would be no covered business interruption. I, I mean, well, I, I think you would talk to your. Well, I think it's good. We should we should do that. And and if there, uh, Joe, if there's specific questions like you're asking tonight, if you Derek yeah. or Derek and, and Dave, if you haven't written them down. Bring them, you know, ask those questions. And, and uh, you know, I, I don't know what, have we ever submitted a sewer failure, um, a pump failure or anything of that nature to our insurance company? Yeah, we've, we've submitted pumps and got the claims. Yeah, we, and every time a car runs through a bridge, that's covered and we and we subrogate those losses that are covered right. losses. So exactly. yeah, we, we've had insurance sure. coverables. We have trees hitting houses. We've had coverage for third party liability for that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we Try to get insurance recovery when there's an insurable yeah. loss. But not, you know, I'd be curious. Let's ask our insurance agent. We have a, we had a, a pipe failure and, and a, a main failure. Um, is it covered? And if it isn't, why not? Why not? That's that's, that's a fair so we're question. Gonna, we're going to feel pretty flat face <laughs> and on and on our heels if we heard from our insurance company that they would cover that million and a half dollars cost. I'm going to feel pretty damn embarrassed yeah. if that's the case. And I'll give you kudos if, if that's the case as well. So uh, I'll eat crow. Well, it's it's, 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 it's not just that. You, you ask your character. I hope it happens. No, it me could too. Be, how far was it from the vibration? Well, that, that was that was pretty far along. Uh, there are no liaison reports. Joe, thank you. Thanks. And there is no other correspondence. Cody, did you want to say something? Madam Chair, go Phillies May. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I second the motion. All right. And, oh, wait, 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 wait. Before the the Zoom room didn't get a chance to have public comment. So I, I forgot to ask them. So Judy or Joanne, if you have any comments, please raise your hand and we can get you in here real quick now. Or nope. forever hold your peace until next next meeting thank you very much for coming um thank you Michelle. those in favor of adjournment aye, aye. thank aye. you